Humans and their environment. Let's have a look at population growth and waste. The population explosion. Population of planet Earth exceeded 7 billion in 2012. It's projected to reach 8 billion by 2030. Now the problem with this is it means more energy and more resources are being used up and this includes water as well as things like fossil fuels and food. And it also means more people produce more waste. So what are we going to do with all this extra waste? Look what's happening to world population. That's called an exponential increase. It's increasing at an increasing rate. Now increasing amounts of waste means increasing amounts of pollution. And we're polluting our water with sewage, with fertilizers which wash off the soil, with toxic chemicals from industry. We're polluting the air with smoke and gases from the burning of fossil fuels. We're polluting the land with toxic chemicals which we dump on the land, for example pesticides and herbicides. We're producing acid rain. This happens when acidic gases such as sulfur dioxide dissolve in the rain and then they fall in the rain and fall onto land and fall into waterways and this lowering of pH can kill plants and animals in the environment. A lot of these chemicals can be applied to the land and then when the rain falls onto the land it washes these chemicals into the waterways and so the chemicals build up and pollute the waterways. It can kill fish, it can kill invertebrates, it can kill aquatic plants. And the increasing human population means there's less land available for other organisms. So by quarrying more, by farming more, by building more and by dumping more waste, we're reducing the land available for other organisms. Deforestation and peat destruction. So why are we bulldozing vast tracts of forest every year? Well, essentially it's to provide more land for more agriculture, to produce more food, to feed more people. Biofuels is accounting for a lot of this. Ethanol, for example, is being produced from sugarcane, so a vast amount of land is being given over for the production of sugarcane and other biomasses, other plant material. There's more cattle and rice fields. Now, cattle fart a lot and cattle respire. That releases more CO2 and methane into the atmosphere. Rice fields as well, the microbes in the soil. When the soil is underwater, the microbes respire anaerobically. That can release methane as well. We're also chopping down the forest to provide more timber. And all this is increasing at a rate of several million hectares per year. Now, there's some serious consequences of deforestation. More CO2 in the atmosphere because if you're chopping down trees, then there's less photosynthesis to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. Sometimes they don't even use the trees, they just burn them to get them out of the way. So the burning of the trees releases CO2. Microbes in the soil can be disturbed. They might respire more, release more CO2. And the other downside of it is the loss of biodiversity. That means a fewer range of species present because of the loss of species just being wiped out and because of the loss of habitats. Peat is the accumulation of partially decayed vegetation. There are large areas of peat and heathland, various suitable places in the world. Now, trouble is, peat is very slow to form. It only forms at a rate of about a millimetre per year. It's burnt as a fuel in some cultures, but it's also used by gardeners as a soil improver. Now, it's a huge store of carbon, so when peat is burnt, the carbon is released as CO2. But it's also a very important habitat for a lot of species, so it does need protection. Peatlands need protection, which is why peat-free composts are encouraged, because those vandalising gardeners, some of them don't think about the peat they use, so they have to use peat-free composts whenever possible.